part of Fiat Chrysler Automobile's most recent five-year plan was to recast Dodge as America's mainstream performance brand. Their words, not ours, what followed included 707 horsepower Hellcats and track-oriented Vipers and a demise of NOS Porti sedans such as the Avenger and, soon, the Dart. But it's not all about burnouts and hot laps at Dodge, as a few more middle-of-the-road offerings like the Durango 3-row crossover still exist to hold up the mainstream end of that slogan. That's not to discredit the Durango, which offers more thrills than many of its competitors, especially when equipped with the Repro Ring Hammy V8 engine, lowered ride height, and more aggressive looks of the RT trim. Not all three-row crossover shoppers need or want 360 horsepower, though, and the majority of Durangos sold are the more sensible V6 version. To help spread the Dodge sportiness across more models, the 2017 Durango now offers a V6-powered GT trim, replacing the previous Limited, with the monochromatic appearance that resembles that of the RT for several thousand bucks less. To our eyes, it works. The GT's body kit and 20-inch wheels nicely accentuate the Durango's muscular stance. Our test car also had the $595 Brass Monkey package, which paints those wheels an attractive shade of bronze. We certainly hope the Beastie Boys are getting royalties. So-so numbers. The performance angle fades a bit when you look at the Durango's test numbers. To its credit, this 2017 version was a bit quicker than a similar V6 AWD model we tested three years ago, getting from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 7.4 seconds and running the quarter mile in 15.7 seconds at 89 miles per hour, 0.2 and 0.1 second better than before. And yet, a Mazda CX-9 was 0.2 second quicker to 60 miles per hour in our testing, and the Honda Pilot was a whopping 1.4 seconds ahead. Don't go stoplight drag racing other crossover driving parents unless you've splurged for the Durango V8, which does 0 to 60 miles per hour in 6.2 seconds. Skid pad grip of 0.76 grams and a 70 to 0 mile per hour braking distance of 182 feet also lagged behind the Mazda and the Honda, which is no surprise considering that the 5,111 pound Durango weighs nearly 800 pounds more than either Japanese brand SUV. Taken beyond the numbers, the Durango remains satisfying to drive. While most other three-row crossovers use front-wheel drive platforms derived from mainstream mid-size sedans, the Durango's chassis is a rear driver that was developed, in conjunction with the Jeep Grand Cherokee, alongside the Mercedes-Benz GLE class SUV going back to the end of the Daimler Chrysler days. That results in a behemoth that's confident in its responses, from the nicely weighted steering to the way its suspension soaks up bumps with nary a reverberation through the stiff structure. The 3.6-liter Pentastar V6 engine also enjoys its job motivating the big Durango, doing so with adequate punch and a pleasing engine note to boot, even if it can't match the growl of the Hemi. Big Beast the Durango's heftiness is partially attributable to its size, as the Dodge has a longer wheelbase and a greater length than either the Honda or the Mazda. Despite its larger footprint, the Dodge's rear-drive layout isn't quite as space-efficient as the Pilot, which has more passenger volume, and the interior feels less airy and spacious than the Honda's. And our test Durango's all-black cabin did nothing to help it feel any roomier. Still, the Dodge's second and third row seats are comfortable even for adults, with the back row's elevated theater seating position helping to avoid the knees in your chest feeling prevalent among many three-row SUVs. The seats fold and tumble easily, too, and their only real complaint with the rear seat setup is that the second row bench doesn't slide. Captain's chairs that reduce seating capacity to six are available for $995 extra on most trims, and the third row is a $695 option on the Bass Durango SXT, which now has a two-row, five-seat interior as standard. Our seven-seat test car was loaded with a $2,395 premium package, beats audio system, navigation, power liftgate, and a sunroof, 
and a $1,195 safety and security package, blind spot warning, automatic high beams, HID headlights, rain sensing wipers, and a power adjustable steering column. Tack on a $1,995 rear entertainment center with two screens mounted on the backs of the front seats and our S-tested price rose to $47,370, not an absurd sum for a big SUV but not exactly a bargain, either, given that it lacks features such as adaptive cruise control in the aforementioned captain's chairs. The value equation isn't helped by the Durango's relatively uninspired interior design. Its 8.4-inch Uconnect touchscreen functions well, but the cabin plastics and upholstery give off a decidedly non-premium vibe. The new Mazda CX-9 in its top signature trim level has raised the stakes in this class, with gorgeous wood and leather that shame many pricier luxury crossovers. Dodge isn't the only one playing catch-up, but this is where the Durango's age is most evident, its cabin materials were considered advanced for the segment when it arrived in the 2011 model year. Aging well overall. Yet it's admirable how class competitive the Durango remains. Features like an engine stop, start system and new active safety tech have been added over the years, and its EPA fuel economy and performance numbers remain in the hunt. The last Durango we tested with the V6 and all-wheel drive averaged 19 miles per gallon during its stay. True to Dodge's mission statement, the Durango's continuing appeal rests on its athletic looks and solid driving dynamics that give it more of a muscle car-like attitude than anything else in its class.